Hey everybody, Ryan O'Donnell here with you with your next game show tutorial. This is a super fun game. This uh, a game is a little bit not as much about the questions, but more about the game and or more about the uh, the gameplay after they get their questions. This is a, uh, this game has been around for a long time. Now, some games we talk about have been around for a long time just have never stopped. Jeopardy, Price is Right. When they have started, it has just been Non-stop. You may change some hosts along the way, but Wheel of Fortune and these other ones, they just keep on going. Uh, some games will disappear for a while and come back. And so we see, a, we've been seeing a, a, a rebirth of some of these 80 games, 70s and 80s games. $100,000 Pyramid has been reborn in this game. This was big in the 80s. Anybody about my generation can maybe remember the uh, of how big this game was. Um, the game is Press Your Luck. Uh, it's it's come back. It's been on for about four seasons now with uh, Elizabeth Bank as the new host. Um, what's fun about this game is an interesting one. We'll get to the gameplay, but it's a game that a lot of people sometimes forget the name of the game. They remember oftentimes what is in the game, the, uh, which is the there's these little red creatures that can steal your money and take away your stuff, and you don't want them. They'll bankrupt you, and they're called whammies, and that's kind of what people have often always called this game. I love that no whammies game. No whammies, no whammies, stop is what people often will say in the game the whole time. No whammy, no whammy, stop. That's not the game. The name of the game. The name of the game is called Press Your Luck. And folks, that's what we got today. Press Your Luck. All right. So yeah, Press Your Luck, like I said, had a, had a, uh, th this run in the 80s and it went away and now it's back today. Side story, by the way, it, uh, it's about the randomness you'll see in the big board about you want to hit the st hit the stopper and see where it lands in terms of money or the little guy will take it away. There's this really interesting story about a guy who tried to hack the system. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Uh, he kind of realized that there is a pattern and, I, and if I follow the pattern, it'll never land on the bad guy. And it's kind of a really interesting way you thought that he could be able to, if he can get on the show, to always guarantee a win. So check it up. Check it out the pressure luck um pressure luck i don't know what it was anyway but um if you could find that it's it's kind of fun all right so um uh, uh, many of my games are uh, are done in power, almost all my games are uh, are in powerpoint and some of them could do google slides google slides like i've talked about in the past um uh, doesn't have the functionality uh, that PowerPoint does. And so when i can i will develop a game in both of those uh, formats um a game like this, it's impossible to be able to do into Google Slides. Um, uh, this game is broken up into two parts. There's questions. If you answer questions correctly, you get number of spins. Questions equal spins. Qu not money, not points, anything like that. It's just how many times it could spin. So that's part one of the game. And that could be done in Google, in Google Slides, no problem. It's just questions and answers. But the fun part of the game is the board that you can see here that you're going to have a light lighted box go around and whenever you hit stop no way me stop then that's where it's going to randomly land and we don't have the ability to do that um in the google slides piece and so, so that's why powerpoint is needed in this one so um and i'll show you that um once we get into the game about how that's played because i had to do a couple of tweaks along the way to be able to make it happen and have it in a part of part of powerpoint all right so like a lot of my games slide number one is the directions and and uh, plus it has the opening logo and it's got the sound effect. Let's check that thing out. When we put the thing in the slideshow, do, 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 pressure luck. I don't know if that's the lyrics, but it's not one of the most catchier tunes of all. Some of them really kind of stick out. But anyway, that's pressure luck, everybody. And then you jump into the game. So um, feel free, like all, like all my games, modify it as you wish. I'm going to show you generally how I play the game. Most of my games, not all of them, but many, many of my games, I like to be able to take the traditional classroom of 25 to 35 kids and how I can be able to get the most amount of them gameplay, uh, being part of the game and um, juggle the team and also individual. And so this game follows along those same uh, lines. Almost anytime I have uh, teams, almost always, no, always, but most of the time I will have three teams. And so that's what we have here. You decide how am I going to be able to take my classes and break them up into teams? Is it geographically, the kids in the left, the right, in the in the center, or are you going to do them by alphabet? Anyway, um, get them set aside. And then the other thing you're going to want to do is create an area where that one player from each team will come up to do the guessing. Think about like in a Jeopardy game where like they need to stand there so the host of the show can look at them and ask them the question. There's only going to be three people playing for each question. Now, I guess if you wanted to, you could double them up into pairs, your choice, 
Uh, I do that in uh, when I play my hundred thousand dollar pyramid. Sometimes it's one on one giving clues, but you could do two on two. So um, I'm going to play it like this: that one person from each team is going to come up, but you can't do more if you wanted to change that. Okay, so I'm going to say, "Hey, teams, here's our teams coming up there." All right, so now it's time for question number one. Give me three players: one person from one, two, and three, or they're going to come to this, come to the front of the room. You could get it. Uh, have an area where they're going to go that's kind of you push the desks aside a uh, couple things that you can do is i would I recommend one of these two things one is get like a tall uh, a table that they can stand in front of um so they know where to go or if you don't and they're just going to stand in the middle of the room then maybe put like a piece of painter's tape on the ground x1 x2 x3 or and so that they know where they ultimately they can go and stand also kind of helps you know is that who's who's on team number one team number two because they're just going to come up and randomly you don't remember who's on which team so it's nice to always have the hey team one is on my left team two is in the middle team three is on the right that's just how i kind of like to be able to do it then you're uh you're gonna have to ask a question the questions uh i'm gonna spend a little time here because the questions is a little is a little tricky here um if Generally, if you uh, the way in which this is work is that when you ask a question, if they get it correctly, they're going to win spins. But how they win spins are different. Is the first person who can answer correctly by just giving them the question without any assistance or multiple choices, if they can get that correctly, that person will win three spins. Now, after the first person has guessed, the other players will then hear what the first person said, and you're going to give them some multiple choice options. This is much easier now. Then what they're going to do is that they, when they answer, if they get that correct, they'll only get one spin. So if you were the first to answer and you answer correctly, three spins. If you guess correctly on the multiple choice part, you get one spin. Okay, so let me show you ultimately where that works. So if I go to slide number uh, three here, you can see um, I, I got my little Bitmoji over there and say, this is kind of what it's like. I got some examples in here and I have my question. The questions that you need here, by the way, is that the question should have a kind of noun answer, a person, a place, a thing, something like that. I wouldn't have longer answers. Um, uh, and such. And so on the top right, it has question number one. So you can keep track, uh, because for our first, for every, we're going to do them in rounds and every round there's going to be four questions, four questions, spin the wheel, four questions, spin the wheel, four questions, spin the wheel. Um, generally, by the way, you can do this as many times as you'd like. I have found some success is that there's that 12 questions works pretty well. Um, some of my other games have much more jeopardy and some of the other games have a lot more questions involved. This is once you get to the spinning part, it will stretch in terms of its time. So you can do more than 12. Uh, the template that you have has those three rounds, four, four, four. If you would like, just, just copy and paste those slides. Nothing is really hyperlinked in this game uh, for the most part. So, um, um, all right, so let me show you what it looks like. I put my question up here. Uh, the question is gonna ask for a noun. Which US president was the only one to serve more than three terms? So let's pretend I'm playing this in a game. I would say, hey students, all right, uh, name me this. Click, question comes up. Then I'm waiting for the first person to chime in. And they can chime in different ways. Is it fastest hand? Is it a buzzer or something like that? Uh, but basically once that, um, once that player chimes in, then you say, okay, let's say Tommy uh, chimed in first. Tommy, which president was that? Then he is going to say out loud the answer, out loud. He can think about it for a second. I'm like, okay, Tommy, what do you think? He's going to go, I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln. What you need to do at that point is not say correct or incorrect. You just address it. Okay, because you got to get the answers from the other two players who were up there. All right. So Tommy said Abraham Lincoln. So now I'm going to look at the two of you all. Then you now need to agree. Is it Abraham Lincoln or and then you give them some detractors. If he gave uh, option A, you need to do then a B, C and a D. So here's the thing for you. You need to have these prepped. So. Uh, the correct answer in this, by the way, is Franklin Roosevelt. Tommy got the wrong answer. What I now need to do in my mind is I can pause for a moment and say, okay, so is it Abraham Lincoln? Then address your notes. So I have them written down here, but I would definitely have them on a piece of paper or a notepad or maybe on another device that's sitting next to me so that I could refer to the other ones that I've pre-written down as detractors. So if he gave me the wrong answer, I need to put the correct answer in there. So I could say, all right, is it Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Roosevelt, George Washington, or Grover Cleveland? Now I had another one on there, Teddy Roosevelt. I didn't include him because Tommy gave me the wrong answer. And for me, I'm only gonna give four each time. 
Okay. And one of these has to be the correct answer. So if I throw in that last one, then it adds an extra one. And that all tells me that Tommy got it wrong. So I'm kind of always going to go with four. Now you can change this. If you only wanted to go with the right answer and two others, you can do that. Um, but make it the same every time. And so then I would say, okay, so now tell me your answers. Then what the kids are going to do is instead of giving it verbally, I don't want one player to go and then him to say it because then that's going to give un undue uh, um, uh, advantage to the third player to go. So I have them use their whiteboards. I'm like, okay, so for those of you, Tommy said Abraham Lincoln, what do you guys think? Is it Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Roosevelt, George Washington, or Grover Cleveland? Hmm. They're going to write for a second. All right, hold them close. Now show me your boards. Then they turn their boards around like, okay, Franklin Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt. All right. So now let's do the math. Tommy, you got it wrong. So you get zero. The other two players both guessed Franklin Roosevelt. So they both get one spin. All right. And that's how question one is going to be done. I'm going to show you kind of where this looks. If you go to the very end, they got some directions and some um, screenshots. This is what it looks like. So for me, you can see behind me, I have my whiteboard back there. And what I would have is a student helper with me do three columns for three teams. And then also then on, then I do rows of keeping track of the spins and then on the score. So team one, Tommy's in team one. So right here, Tommy's going to get a big zero goose egg. Didn't do anything. Team two and team three both got one spin. So I would say, okay, let's say uh, my helper over there, give team one zero spins. Team two gets one. Team three gets one. All right. And what about score? Don't worry. We'll get to that later because all we do is all we do is the questions for spins. So that is question number one. Now give me three new people. So after I've done, here's my question. There's my answer. Discuss the spins. Also, this is always a time in my games too. If I want to do some reteaching, if you guys can remember Franklin Roosevelt, he actually got, he was, he was elected on his fourth term. He died in office and it was after him. We finally installed the two terms as your limit. You can have your reteaching moments there. Next slide then <clears throat> is basically a slide for you to be able to say, Hey, thanks for you three. Give me three new people up here. And then you can get the next three folks up kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, once they come on up, then you say, all right, get ready for the fast hand. And then again, it, it tell them, is it going to be first hand, that kind of stuff, reset, go. And here comes the question. Since this is PowerPoint, feel free to put in images and whatever you need to up there. All right, type of rock scene here where player particulars, uh, particles are left and layered over time. Boom, hands go up. Uh, sedimentary, uh, Stephanie says, nice job, Stephanie. So every, the other two, is, is it sedimentary? And then you give your other answers. Um, Something to be aware of, by the way, is that if, let's say if she got it wrong, if she said igneous, I don't want to always just give the correct answer the first one. You follow me on this? Is because that way it's either going to be what the kid said first or the second answer, and it's never number three or number four. So in your mind, let's say if she goes igneous, they're like, okay, good job, Stephanie. So is it igneous or is it metamorphic, cosmic, or sedimentary? I went opposite that way in my head. I went from bottom to top so that each time the kids aren't picking up on a, like I mentioned, the one guy who tried to, who tried to uh, game the system because he always knew the pattern. Be careful they don't pick up on your pattern that it's e either the kid got it right or it's the second answer. Anyway, just a little tip there. Uh, and do, don't feel like you have to rush with the answers right away. Pause for a moment is the biggest thing. Like, okay, let's see. Is it that one or? Okay, is it or? And then you kind of read them. It'd be fine, but just don't just don't kind of rush into it and make some mistakes kind of a thing. All right. And that, in essence, is the how you get the spin, spin, spin. We're going to do that for question number one. Question number two, answer. Question number three, answer. Question number four, answer. So in those four questions, I have three people coming up from each team. Um, or if you want, they can make them into partners or whatever. Um, and so I'm getting multiple people playing the game. Now comes what the kids call the fun part. And you can see a little bit emoji me over there saying, it's time to spin. This is just a transition for you to say, hey, the um, question phase is over. We've won our spins. And for the most part, every team should have a, a couple spins um, uh, to be able to play. The neat part now is... Just because you have a lot of spins doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win. If one team has eight spins, another team only has four, the four-team spinner could do well and, and because they get more points or they don't get any of the whammy guys or whatever. All right, and let me show you this right here. Once you got all your spins, they should be up on the board over there. You go to the team. I probably I usually do them who go who had the most spins go first, or you could do the opposite. doesn't really matter, but just let them know ahead of time. Here's where the spins happen. Uh, this is a complicated slide. <clears throat> uh, 
for us to be able to go in this round here, they have a lot of spins to be able to go through. Um, uh, I created three of these, one, two, and three. Three different boards for you to play. If you want, you can just stick with one. But they change, the prizes change, the number of whammies will change. Like you can see here on the first one, there is only a whammy one, whammy two. And then the second board, I have one, two, three whammies. And then the last board, I have one, two, three, four, five. And such. So your, your choice, you can mix, go through the different boards or not, or just stay in the one. But let me show you kind of how the board works. Um, this is complicated, like I said. Uh, it says, before you play, get comfortable with this of so the slide and the buttons. Before you even do this, by the way, my recommendation, watch the show. If you, I'm assuming if, you, if you're watching this video, you've seen the show or you're thinking about doing it, but definitely watch the game. Check out the old ones on YouTube or the new ones on ABC. Uh, check it out, but get comfortable with it. Um, uh, and here's how I designed this. There's a fair amount of animation and triggers and action settings and all that sort of stuff and sound effects. You don't need to touch any of it, but let me explain how it works. This silver button over here on the left, the spin button is the spinner and the stop. So whenever you hit that, you're going to have the beep, pop, boop, boop, boop. The music's going to go off and it's going to be this random sort of kind of a thing. When you hit that, it will then stop. Let me show you what it looks like when we put it in the slideshow. There is no sound, but as soon as I click... This music's just gonna be on a loop. And then, let me show you how I designed this. The way I designed this was, whenever I hit that button, it will spin, and then when I hit the button again, it's gonna stop. And what I made different from the game, I had a hard time thinking about how can I be able to have this randomly go all over the place, and whenever you hit a button, it, it, the randomness will stop. Um, so it can't be random. But what I did is I basically made this four-point star this four-point star is designed to go not in a circle, but to go in this square very, very quickly. As soon as I hit that spin, it's going to move really, really fast. When you hit stop, it's going to be able to stop at some point. And it's moving so quickly. I have tested this. I've played it with students and other teachers. And it's at the speed where I can see it. But it's also at the speed where I don't think I can try to be able to make it, ha make it happen. So for me, like I can see there's a cruise down here in the bottom left. I'm going to try to make it land on cruise. I'm with my eyeballs. I'm trying to time the speed of this thing. Stop. I was totally on the opposite side. I was at 3,000. So you can see no matter how good you get at this thing, you're not going to be able to like manually make it. Oh, I got close. It's just go by guessing. You're not going to be able to get that. Anyway, uh, and so wherever that goes. So let's say on my first spin, I say, all right, let's spin the thing. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Where did it land? It landed on, let me find another one. Landed on 3,000. Then my helper over there is going to write 3,000 on the board. Nice job. And then they are going to erase one of their spins. So if they started with five spins, spin number one, they now goes to four spins, and then their amount goes to $3,000. So they go to 3K over there. And so the helper is going to slowly reduce the number of spins and increase the amount that is in their bank. I like to go... You could do it your own way, but I like to go team one, spin, team two, spin, team three, back to team one, team two, team three. You could just do have the one team do all their spins, the second team do all their spins. Your choice on how you want to be able to do that. And that in essence is it. I made the um I made the uh I made this a four point star so that no matter where it's at, if it's on the right, the left, the top, or the bottom, there is always a uh, majority amount in one of the squares. So for example, in the top, it's landed here in the top right corner. And I can see is that most of it is in the 3000 and it's not in the whammy. So you need to tell the kids ahead of time, hey, it's wherever most of this is touching. Okay. And that way um, you're not going to get any, like, where's it really landing on? I guess you theoretically could have it right in the middle. I, I, I played this game a couple times. This is one of my newer games. I played this with my students three times three different class settings, and in none of those has it ever landed. And me practicing and playing has never landed in the middle. I would say if it does land in the middle, you just give the students to, hey, I'm either going to tell them you're going to get the better of the two or you spin again in case that ever would happen. Okay, And so that's how the spinning works. Now, what happens if it lands on one of these things that's just a prize, like a cruise, 
uh, make up a make up amount, maybe ahead of time, you could be able to say, hey, the cruise is worth $3,247. Yay, kind of a thing. Uh, there's another one called big bucks. Big bucks, you can make it a secret amount, uh, or you could be able to just match whatever the biggest thing on the board is. So the biggest one is 4,500. It could be that, or it could be a secret envelope that you can pull out, have fun with it. Uh, I have one in the bottom right-hand corner here called candy. That one literally is no money. I just tell the kids, I got a bucket of my Halloween candy or Easter candy or whatever. Hey, there you guys go. You don't get any points, but you all get a quick handful of candy kind of a thing. Um, so that's the fun part. But let's talk about those little red guys. There it is. Oh, good lucky one on them. Um, it landed on a whammy. So how does the whammy work? What the whammy does in the game is it just depletes everything that you've got. I'm going to play mine slightly different. There's two ways in which that my game is different than the television game. One is that if you land on a whammy, all I'm going to do is subtract a thousand. Uh, you may want to subtract more or less, maybe in later rounds, you can, you can subtract 2000 once you go to the second round and 3000 or whatever, um, kind of a thing. Um, that's one part. The other thing that I do that's different from the game is that uh, the host will allow people to pass their spins and we don't do any of that. However many spins you have is the spins that you got or unless something happens here, like you gained, you won a spin, you're going to have to use it. You lost a spin, you're going to have to lose it, but there's no passing of them. I don't do that. All right. So go back to the whammy guy. You landed on a whammy for a little bit of fun. That's what the red button does. It'll come the sound effect and the guy doing a little whammy thing. Here comes my little whammy guy, do, 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 and then he goes. And then, the, and then the kids will react, and then you tell the person up on the board, your scorekeeper, all right, Stephanie, let's take – that's team number two. Uh, that was their spin. They lost a spin, and Mr. Whammy came in, so subtract 1,000 or 2,000, whatever you've come up with. I'll let them know. I would write it up on the board on the side note that Whammy equals a certain amount to let them know. Okay, so that is board one of one, round one, but board one. And if I click on the next round, by the way, none of these, wherever I click is disabled. So um, how they, how are you going to spin? I'm spinning right now. So the, these are the ways that you could be able to have it. You could tell the students to tell you to hit stop. No whammy, no whammy. I'm listening to them. Stop. And then I click stop. But then they're going to get a note like you, you're too slow. My recommendation is you go get yourself one of these a wireless mouth, mouse with a USB. I'm running the game. And then when I'm ready, I say, hey, guys, now it's time for the spin. Here you go. They can't manually go anywhere because it's disabled. I can do it on the keyboard over here, but all they can do is hit this. They can hit the spin, or if they did want to go the next round, they can hit this button. Okay. But everything else is disabled. So that's kind of a nice way to allow them to do the clicking to get to the next thing. Okay. Um, if I did want to go the next round, it's just a new board with more whammies and different sort of things to be able to mix it up a little Thing, you know, you can see different, hey, snowboard or pick a corner or more whammies and that kind of stuff. And the whammies do different things each time. The kids like to see what the new little whammy effect you guys does and all that sort of stuff. So um, that in essence is it. After my, th I'm in round one, I got three different whammy uh, uh, pressure luck boards. Then I go to four new questions. And folks, that's the game. There's no end. There's no um, final this or final that. I just think about it. four questions play some whammies, four questions, play some whammies. And in essence, I don't even need any of these, by the way, I don't need any questions. I could just, I could just have the whammy board up. I can read them out loud. They don't they need to have a, they don't need to have it up on the screen. Uh, I could be able to add more, less, doesn't matter. This is where the fun comes in. There's sound effects there. Yeah, this is where the fun is, right? The fun is the, is this, the kids will have a good thing and you don't need to pre in. It's like, um, the randomness of it all will create the drama that goes up there. And trust me, they'll have fun kind of going along with those things. And so anyway, folks, that's the essence of the game. Let's see what I'm missing over here. Um, if you go to the end, if you go to the end, here are some of the directions that you have. I got here's how to be able to get the thing started about chiming in and all that sort of stuff. Um, the rounds have questions and here's what the whiteboard looks like. And this is ultimately how it should be going throughout the game of what the, what your uh, a helper will be doing up over there. And then here is the, um, um, like I mentioned before about how I, how I differ from the television game. And I said, customize it. Like you said, if you want to be able to make the whammy worth 1000 round two, and then 2000 round three, that's a good way to be able to kind of uh, make sure as you move farther in the round that you can really help the teams that are struggling 
that if a whammy hits, it can kind of hurt the winners or whatever. Um, and the last thing is just yeah, be, be careful with this thing, which is the, if I want to start adding my own and doing stuff, you can, if you notice like, Hey, like, Hey, I can change. Maybe that's a number. Oh, I could change that number to whatever I want, you know, kind of a thing. But some of them you, you kind of like, well, how do I get to this and to that? And whatever. So, uh, it's all set. Be careful. If you, <laughs> you could mess up with some of the animations or whatever, but remember always save as a different file name so that you always got the original. You can download the original one again. If you got any questions, feel free to be able to reach out. This is one of my newer games. Like I said, I've only played this one on three different settings with my students. It's one of my newer ones that I've done. I would love to hear back from you all about this and as usual with all of my games get the excitement up get them get them excited about the whammies and then che cheering them up and clapping when the good things happen or you know, or the frustration when the bad guys come along kind of a stuff and as always too like i said i'd love to be able to hear your feedback comments in the youtube section share outs on the tpt and the instagram and all that sort of stuff anyway folks hope you love it this game has been pressure love. <laughs>